My topic is on the Grangers, who are more formally known as the Patrons of Husbandry. The Granger movement was founded in 1867 by a man named Oliver Hudson Kelly. So the intent was to bring farmers together and to discuss agricultural styles and to attempt and correct the costly and inefficient methods of agriculture and farming and transportation and things like that. Um, the popularity of the Granger movement was, quote, less for its social and educational advantages than for the opportunity it presented for farmers to unite against the monopolistic practices of railroads and elevators and to institute for themselves cooperative methods of buying and selling. So it was basically the farmer's way of having a voice and grouping together to try and get what they wanted across instead of to try and fight the monopolies of the railroads, basically. Um, the Western farmers relied solely on the railroads and the great elevators to transport food because that was the only way they could get their food out to the world was with railroads and great elevators and there was a monopoly on the railroads which of course drove the prices through the roof because if no one's regulating it and there's no other way for the farmers to distribute their food they have to pay whatever the railroads wanted them to because of this, the farmers were losing more and more money as time went on because they were just raised the prices. Um, the Grainshire model was, quote, I feed you all, and it asserted that, quote, the farmer is the central character upon which all society relies. And this is what they were, their movement was based off of that, like, telling the society, like, you need us in order to eat, like, and if we go on strike, you guys are all screwed. Um... The railroad industry began being regulated not until 1904, when President Theodore Roosevelt came into office. He saw that there was a lot of corruption going on, and he was out to end that. Um, in 1904, the Supreme Court ruled that the combination of railroads across Northern America violated the 1890 Sherman Antitrust Act. And basically, this established the right of the government to intervene in the monopolistic trusts and to redistribute them, pretty much, to end the monopolies. Um, this is the first of the many Roosevelt Acts that led to the end of the railroad monopolies. There was a few others, but there was a lot of failed ones. There was several times with the Freight Act where he put a limit on the amount of grain and people that the trains could carry, where they just ignored it. And that was a big ordeal as well. But in the end, it ended up, he ended up being successful, and the railroads were no longer monopolized, and so the Grangers did end up getting what they asked for, and it brought the, the cost of food down, the cost of transportation down, and pretty much just fixed all the problems. Um, but yeah, it took quite a long time for the Grangers to actually get what they wanted, and it was, there was a lot of rebellions, a lot of striking, just a lot of ill mannerism between the railroad companies and the farmers, but yeah, thanks.